here's where I start. I take a look at the small study. I like the way the mountains look in the background. And so I want to accentuate the, the interplay of the yellow and the purple behind it. So because yellow and purple are complements, I want to enhance that. I like how I hit the tops of the mountains with the darker tone because that is what I see in the, in the photo somewhat and I know I saw it in, in the scene because I wasn't looking at a photo when I was painting it. This is my photo and you can see the tops of the mountains there. It doesn't look exactly the way I captured it here. And so I did a very, very quick draw. You can see between this composition and this, there are some changes. It's going to show me dark and light, and it's going to show me the composition I want to use. I've got my drawing, I've got my painting, and now I will go ahead and begin. Well, I toned my canvas, and I drew out my composition that I want to follow. And I'm using my larger open box M box for in my studio right now. now I want to get into this. I've mixed up a little bit of paint of an edge of this, which will probably lighten up a little bit as I go, but I want to start with a darker edge on here. I've used some cerulean blue for this mixture, and I have used some alizarin crimson in this mixture and then some white so um just so you know how i mixed that mountain color now this will be warmer coming down in here with the mountain but this will be a cool edge that's kind of a good start with that and i want to do a darker green which i probably did not need all that white my darker green i'll use my alizarin into that some ultramarine blue. So, so that makes a nice dark. Okay, so that's a nice um, purple for the background there. That's a warmer purple for the mountain, and then I'll probably mix a cooler as well. So grab a little more of that cerulean in there. I did grab some of the of the ultramarine. And then this mountain in here, this is going to be a redder uh, mixture. This one back here is a little bit different. It's a little bit muted out more. So I'm going to start with this one. Then as it comes forward, it gets a little warmer on location. You'll see how it changes as it comes forward. You have to be a little careful with the purple and the yellow mixing together. And I am using the, that complement style of mixing. Um, but it does gray out and mud and get muddy fairly quickly if you're not careful with it. So just remember that as you're mixing. This is my, I'll borrow a little bit of that. This is my background and it actually needs to stay pretty cool and light. That light mountain in the background, it was like it was, it was catching the sun. So it does actually warm up a little bit with some reddish. Okay, so. Just a lightness. It kind of gets maybe lighter as it gets closer to the overlapping mountain. This is my closer mountain, and it's definitely more on the reddish side of things. Create some of those mounds just with the color changes that you make. Uh, very flat right now, but it will change so like there. That helps just a little temperature change in there helps. So, and then there's 
a another. I don't want that going towards the corner. That's a not a good tangent hitting the corner there, so. get in with some of this green plant area and since that is sort of the main event here and that's a that's a decision you need to make right off the bat um, what is this painting about what what did I like about this so here's where I'm going lightly over that already painted area so I'll take my paint um, and it really was the plant itself that I was drawn to so um, that is my main event here. But the so the rest of it, it, it like a play, they're supporting characters. They help to make your main character stand out. And that's exactly what's happening here. I'm handling this plant more as a large shape rather than a wispy here and there kind of a nondescript item in the painting and so it really needs to be more of a solid shape and then I can come back and put the what I call sky holes but in this case you'll see mountain mostly behind it and so you can come back and add in a few of those. Um, I still want to make it look light and wispy but I want to do it in such a way where the main event, the plant with the yellow flowers, becomes the most important thing in the This is the block in, by the way. The block in is where you get the canvas covered up. Okay, now, the core, this is the shadow in this bush. And when we're painting shadows, we want to put a lot of color into our shadows. That's straight from Carlson. Really put a lot of color into your shadows and make them come alive. Okay, so where is this plant going? It's got some darks, dark branches out here that help to support the bush. And I didn't draw everything. I just kind of drew the most important parts, but this is the shadow area of the bush. My tree bush. <laughs> So now, some of the branches do come out this way. So some of this shadow is not on the ground. It's, it's actually inside the bush. It gives it that anchored down feeling. And then the darks and the lights make your painting come alive. So with that contrast between the darks and the lights, it makes your painting come alive. Here's my mid-tone of the greens. I'm moving my brush in a wispy fashion. So you don't always paint uh, foliage like this, but in this case, I let my movements of the brush take on the energy of the tree. It's good to have enough paint out there when you're actually painting. So this is, this is less uh, warm of a light color. It's down here, kind of underneath things. So it's still catching some light, not quite as much sunlight. Now I'm moving up here, so I'll add some more warmth to my foliage. And I think when you're sitting out there um, and you've got you know, bees buzzing around you and uh, other possible you know, ants crawling up your leg and stuff like that. You're thinking about a lot of things, you know, so just give yourself a break a little bit. And sometimes you just need to get out of there pretty quickly. So get the, get the um, composition down and then uh, get yourself out of the uncomfortable place. But there's a lot of really nice things to say about being out in nature. And there are a lot of reasons that sometimes you want to do these paintings rather quickly. So I, I mentioned that because you don't always get everything into the study, nor should you, because that would take too long. 
and your light is always changing. So if you are feeling uncomfortable a little bit and you want to get done really fast or if your light is, you're in a, in a time of day when the light is just changing very, very rapidly, you need to work fast. So uh, get it done, get the important, the most important things down and actually you, you do get the most important things down, especially when you need to work that way. A lot of people take too long with their studies because they're very comfortable in that little beautiful little sunny area that they're sitting and they they don't want to leave too quickly well in that case start finish that painting and start another one don't just noodle that painting around and do do it for too long because really you you lose the life in the painting got life into it. I don't want to touch it too much more. I want to get the other parts of the block in. Down. I'll let some of that warmth come into that there. It doesn't have to be blue. Let that shadow swing around. Now, kind of coming close to that plant there don't really want any plant color in in the mountain itself so I'll wipe my brush in between I want there to be clarity between the mountain area and the plant area and I'm going to come back in with those flowers at the end and hit them on the top I just uh, wanted to make mention of that, that you need, you really need to see the difference between the plant and then the mountain behind it. And remember, what's that, when, once that, those yellow flowers go onto it, it's really going to make that background pop out as well, because when you put the um, complement against it, you see background even more. Not much more. I'm going back and forth between looking at the photo and looking at how I have it in the study. As it gets down closer to the ground plane and as it gets closer to us as the viewer, it gets warmer. The mountain itself gets warmer, warmer in tone. So I'll see some of these um, pretty oranges and yellows mixed in with that background. Reds. Keep a good pair of pliers by your easel, and if you can, you know, bring a, maybe a smaller one out in the field with you, big enough though to handle these caps. Because sometimes if they haven't been open in a while, especially for my hands that are not that weak, but um, sometimes I can't get these open with my bare hand. So the pliers come in really handy. And then this tool, um, it's called a tube ringer. And I'll see if I can find you a link to that. But this is really great. I love to have this in the studio and um, then it, I don't waste any paint and I can wring my, basically wring my tubes out and use all the paint in them. I'm, oh, I'm not frugal when I'm using the paint, but I certainly don't want to waste any paint left in the tube. So. I'm getting ready to do the ground plane so I want to stay really light um, the ground plane is probably it's lighter than any of this that I'm gonna put down right now and I'll go back in with something lighter but um, I want to start with some of this stuff so there's uh, I, might, I might go in with another bush over here because 
It's just a nice buffer right in here. There's shadow down in here, and so I'm kind of getting ready to paint some of that shadow in as well. So. Sand is, is a little confusing. If you look at it too long, you'll see way too many colors in it. Um, at the at the beach, sand can be very dark. And your eyes, you know, think about what's happening with your eyes at the beach. Your, the dilation of your eyes because the sand is so bright. Um, so think about that too. And um, it, it plays tricks on your eyes. Shadows in here and I want to make sure they get painted sure to get painted the right tones. Try adding a little green into those sand shadows. They get softer as they go away from the object. Some dark yellow going on in that shadow. points my eye in that direction. Make sure I got the right shape to that. Just let it be known that there's something back there. Don't need to know exactly what kind of plant it is or anything like that, but just get something in there. Get something in here. back there so I can just kind of brush over the it's almost a pinky in tone gray with these areas back in here to paint I've got some in here kind of up front and then as you paint more on your painting they they get softened out That way, you, know, you don't have a lot of little extra spaces at the end where you'd have to go back and repair anything. I have often looked at other artists' work and I, and I think, man, that's something I would have never thought of. Gosh. And it really is, um, it's like looking into somebody's soul, almost looking at their painting. So I, I think it's very interesting. These artists from long ago who have left their mark on the world you, it's like you know them, you know part of them, and I, I think it's so cool to um, to have that, to leave that piece of you behind. When you leave the earth, you know, it's nice to know that you've done something to leave behind. My uh, my grandmother was a painter, and we have her. Bits. I, I didn't get to spend a lot of time with her because uh, she lived in another country and um, you know, we had very few visits but because I have her a lot of her paintings to look at I feel as though I know her more and I could see the strokes that she she thought through and just really a nice thing to share that with others. I'm doing a little bit of this work uh, that, that kind of goes around the different parts of the painting now, like the, um, the sand areas and I'm working through these just filling in around the block in now. So I've got little pop.
parts of the canvas that need paint. Sometimes you just have to try something, lay it down on the canvas to see if it'll work at times. So will it support that? Will it uh, work right in that part? get too comfortable with with it you know paint fast and paint it like you're you're really doing a job here and I I think that your paintings will look so much better if you can do that if you can paint with energy you know paint like the light is going down I think you'll be much happier with it if you do that. We're gonna uh, go in with the with the sky now because um, I would like to add in the flowers, but I don't want to do it. I, I want to do it after the sky goes in. I'm going to try to grab some clean white and some cerulean blue. I'll put some white out just to grab for some clouds. It's not very clean. When you do the sky, you want to use a clean brush. Okay? And I'm, I'm going to add some, I'm going to make it smooth. Oh, pretty. Up top, at the zenith, there's going to be more blue, and you can really see it here in the photo. You've got We've got some um, ultramarine up there. Whoops, see that? See what I did just then? I got green in my sky. Now the yellow behind it is pretty dry now, so I'm not worried about that. So now I can go in with a thicker white paint. Let's add just a too much, just a touch of warmth to that, so it's not just white, white. No, that's much better. And these are real wispy clouds running across the sky. We had a we had a windstorm and we had rain while I was there. It was in the desert where it does get very windy at times, and. Um, these clouds were just blowing around the sky. It's really changing it, putting the sky in. have a lot of a lot of paint on that green. That'll teach me I better paint um, maybe I need to paint thinner at the block end and then I won't have that problem with the sky. I can just go over it once I get the sky in. I'm going up against the mountain so I'm trying to be a little more cautious there. Uh, now I'm to the point in the scene where I'll be adding some details and uh, hoping to make this thing come alive. I'm noticing that this is a little too, um, I don't know, I want to see a separation here. I want to I want to make this more shadow looking, shadow like in here. So that's one thing. I want to add the flowers in. I want to put some not really detail much back in the mountains. Um, I'll probably leave the sky as is for now. I want to make this look like a plant here. And um, so I'll work on the shadows mostly and the plant.
Thank you.